Okay. Thank you everyone to come to come to here to talk and to listen my talk. So let's get started. I'm Hajime from Japan. I'm going to give a tutorial about my recent work, uh, which which the, the name of the project is Revolts Project. So my tutorial will be consists of the four different parts. I would like to introduce to briefly introduce about what is what the Revolts is. Then going to um, to express my motivation for the testing framework using this Revolts and what is missing right now, and what we can do it with RevOS. Then I'm going to give a, a concrete example of how to write a test, test program by using this framework. Then conclude with uh, the question and answer take, uh, session. So let's get started. So what is RevOS? It is essentially just a library version of the kernel, Linux kernel uh, software stack. So you can say this is kind of user space operating system or user space network stack, but it's, it is just a library. You can pick any part of the library into your any kind of program, theoretically. So I have been talked about this, uh, this, uh, this library, and uh, I also talked this, this, uh, this talk uh, this, about this library in the last year's NetDevConf. So if you are really interested in you, the slide material is available on the web pages. And uh, I also proposed these patches to the kernel mailing list in the last year, March, I guess. And which was really, uh, which really initiated a really big discussion <coughs> during the kernel mailing list. And uh, some of the folks is not really happy about this kind of stuff because we already have a really similar project, uh, which is uh, user mode Linux. But uh, it basically have a good, uh, good feedback regarding how to improve your mental, uh, my maintenance ability of these patches or how to use it in the future. And uh, if you want to see how people are thinking about this reverse project, uh, there are a couple of articles available on the web pages and also some of the discussion board was and discuss about why we have the voice in 2016 or 2015. You can see such a discussion on the web as well. So next, uh, how to use this library in your program? So at this moment, I personally created the two applications for this library. The uh, first one is the Network stack in user space or news, which any application can use your own network stack without installing the kernel, uh, kernel network stack. So you can just link this library into your program. And if this library includes a new protocol, for example, you can use this new protocol without involving the, any other components in the, in the operating system. I am calling this kind of flexibility as a network, network stack personality because we don't have to care about any other part. It's kind of selfish way, but uh, it's kind of the way to do something new. And then another application that I'm also uh, created, uh, implemented is uh, the network meta integration, which is called direct code execution. This name is kind of the point of view from the network meta side because the Linux kernel stack code can be directly executable on the network simulator. And this tutorial is only about this latter part, uh, network simulator integration, which, uh, which is useful to test your network protocol on top of a network simulator. So you can see my current application available with DevOS is kind of only <coughs> for the user space stack. We can combine application with this library, or we can combine the network simulator with this library as a debugging tool. But my motivation for this uh, revoice project is not only for such a special purposes, but also extract this library and uh, functionality of this library into the, any kind of situation. 
for any kind of program or any kind of environment. So I am not only the guy who is thinking about something like that. And this idea is maybe called any, ki any kernel architecture, which was introduced by one of the NetBSD hacker. Uh, his name is Anti Kanti. And uh, he defined, clearly defined this architecture as called in this slide, um, which is that we define an any, kernel, any kernel to be an to be an organi organization of the kernel code which allows the kernel's unmodified drivers to be run in various configurations, such as an application library, or micro kernel style servers, or as a part of the usual monolithic kernel. So the benefit is we can use the same code bases, same matured code bases of the Linux kernel in user space without modifying something or adapting something. And it can run on the various platform, as I mentioned it. So right now, my application is only running on Linux host. But uh, you can run this application on different operating system. For example, you can run your application with linking with this OS on FreeBSD, for example. Or you can run this program directly on the bare metal machine or on top of hypervisor. This kind of stuff is nowadays fairly popular as calling a unikernel. I don't know if you have heard about this one, but uh, I guess this will be one of the big, biggest buzzwords in 2016. <laughs> it is, uh, Docker acquired the can one of the unikernel company, which may boost, accelerate this kind of buzzword. But I believe that buzzword is sometimes in interesting. In this case, Unikernel provides our unique to, to us a unique feature, which is single purpose operating system, which is shown in this figure. So the left one is the traditional network stack running a traditional operating system stack running on the hypervisor. You can see the operating system guest operating system on <coughs> hypervisor with the user space application. But nowadays, this kind of application is only used for a single purpose, like, uh, like Docker container provide a single shot application with the virtualized environment. So in that case, maybe there are some of the duplication between the guest operating system and the host operating system. And someone wants to strip down, strip out and uh, the du duplicated part as shown in the right part. So in this stack, there is no explicit operating system in the guest operating, si guest operating system side, but an application can link the operating system functionality as a single binary. So they, this kind of stuff is not invented by myself, but they call this kind of stuff as a unikernel. So it is single purposes, and it's also resource efficiently, use resource efficiently. And uh, it also has agility to boot up this operating system. So some of the folks from Cambridge is exp was experimenting the, this agility. So they showed the booting up process, boot up operating system is only take very small amount of time within the TCP three-way three handshake. So which means you can employ this operating system as a kind of INET-D-like program. If you, if you receive some TCP SIM, uh, SIM packet and the demo program accept this packet and uh, ex execute this operating system within the three-way three handshake. Yes? So why do you need the DM? It seems like if you're running it as a Unix process, you're already isolated from each other. Yes. In your, is that just a diagram, or do you need a VM to do this Unix kernel? Uh, uh, the hypervisor itself is not mandatory, I believe. You, you can run on top of the bare metal machine without any hypervisor. In that sense, maybe there is no isolation, but... Isolation being Unix process, isolated from another? 
there's only a single process, a single application on the hardware. I see, the whole hardware just runs one process. Okay, good. So this is kind of demonstration that I am using the OS as a unicornial way. So the left part, it's a little bit hard to see. Left part is, part is using <coughs> pin 6 command. It's embedded to the library of the Linux kernel, maybe. I mean, Linux kernel of the latest volume, maybe. And uh, it is running on Linux. But it can be run on the any, uh, it can be run on the other operating system, which is kind of virtual machine in a single process. And the right one is showing a Hello World program because I'm not getting nice way at this moment, but running on the ARM architecture without any operating system. So what is different from other similar technologies? So we, as I mentioned it, uh, we already have a user mode Linux or UML, which generates user space executable of the Linux kernel code. And they also had a plan to provide the shared library version of this UML. But at this moment, they only have a providing executable. And the container is always interesting enemies because they are really lightweight and they provide a, they provide a really good use case by using the, some uh, available tools like Docker. But by nature, they share the kernel, kernel network, uh, kernel stack with the between the host operating system and guest operating system, which means you cannot run the foreign operating system in the guest side. And uh, another project, another software which is available in the past, I don't know, it's not available in now, now, is NFSIM, which is, I believe, stands for Net Filter Simulator. So the idea and the, the software <coughs> implementation is really similar with us, and uh, but their focus only is was only focused on the net filter subsystem, I believe. But I try to extend this idea for more broader networking subsystem. So there is uh, recently there is some news. Uh, from this project, because there are another project established by the another guy, which is called the Linux Kernel Library, or LKL. Uh, this part is also, was also proposed to the kernel mailing list by an Intel guy. The part itself is really new, but uh, they, are, they have been working on almost 10 years ago. But uh, before starting my divorce project, I, I didn't see they are working on. So that's why I started before, but uh, they try to follow us, or they try to do together or something like that. <laughs> so they are surely, certainly duplicate or conflicts between two projects. So I think it's not good, uh, it's not good situation to do the same thing in a different project. So. I think this LibreOS project is going to be diminished or migrated to the, this LKL project because their code is really beautiful and they address, they, they address some of the issues that LibreOS, LibreOS has. So I already ported some of the code into this new project. Some of them is not uh, ported yet, but uh, I plan to do I plan to put all the parts and uh, try to join and work together in the future. So that's pretty much about the introduction of the LibreOS, and uh, I'm going to move the main topic of this tutorial. <coughs> so the, the objective of this tutorial is giving some insight to test your network protocol by using this framework. Why I'm working on this testing framework, even though even if I am not developing any any network protocol in the Linux kernel, it is purely because 
testing network code is, I believe testing network code is really hard. Networking is not only a single machine's process, a single machine's operation, it's, uh, it's simply distributed way, and it's simply distributed in the uh, system, which may, which may have some complicated processes to test your code. And uh, as some of the NetDev folks presented in the, in the first day of this conference, uh, we, we sometimes employ mass, massive number of the virtual machine instances to test your code. For example, they, uh, NetDev guy tests the Quagga code with the conformance test or some um, regression test. And they employ also so many virtual machine instances, right? But uh, this kind of virtual machine instances sometimes uh, making high load. And uh, I believe this, uh, this ma massive virtual machine instances makes some uh, makes trouble to control every what what's happening in the every node. So you can create such a huge test, test bed you know, that, uh, for your own test program. But uh, I don't think, I, I'm not thinking that you can, we can cover all the tests with this kind of this restricted environment, for let's say. And another aspect of the motivation is uh, the amount of code that we have to test it. So this is kind of quick accumulation of the uh, commit log of the Linux kernel tree under the net slash directory only. So it's hard to read it, but uh, the x-axis of this uh, left side figure shows the, the date of the commit, and the uh, y-axis shows the number of commits per day. So it's Really, relatively huge project, which all, which all, we have uh, almost 1,000 kilo lines of code in a single network subsystem, and the number of commits is more than 30 or around 30. And uh, we can expect this code base will be bigger than be, uh, increased, and uh, more we will have the code code base. Maybe more we will have uh, potentially bugs after introducing something or after changing some uh, this code bases. So if you change something and uh, if you require some tests for this modification, and if your test is very simple case like showing this linear topology, is it is it is easy to create such a test environment in your laptop or in your virtual machine. But uh, if your test requires more complex network topology like show, showing like this figure, it may be require the huge resources to conduct a simple test. And uh, by considering such a high load environment and the scheduler will be more, may be puzzled during the test, during the test, it's not likely to reproduce all the time with the same test. <coughs> And it also involves the, uh, many kind of configuration scripts, which is also hard to describe with it. And it also runs different machines and the different operating system instances across the distributed, uh, distributed way. And if you spot some of the bug in a huge network, how to debug it is a really big question for me. So there is a kind of distributed debugger that you can debug your code across the different nodes, but uh, using this kind of distributed debugger is also painful, I believe. So, or maybe you will open up the every, uh, many, many terminal windows in order to attach your debugger. Let's say that, that topology includes probably 300 nodes within uh, this testing network. And if you want to find some uh, some strange behavior to from the this 300 nodes, maybe you have to open up. It's not mandatory, but it's 
you may have to open up the 300 windows to attach the debugger. Actually, you don't have to open up the window, but you may, you anyway need to control the 300 terminals. So I think I'm not only the guy who is thinking about something like this. So there are so many projects uh, dedicated for the testing purposes. purposes. Like uh, this is the list of that I can find from the web or the kernel tree. And I also added the NetDev project as I knew this project during this conference. But uh, all of them feel the different, pop, uh, different objective to test the code. And uh, I'm not saying I can replace all the past projects with this testing framework, but uh, I'm trying to fill the gap by introducing this testing framework because it tried to ease the controlling, rem controlling remote host by using the network simulator facility and trying to provide the deterministic behavior of the testing because we can also use the deterministic crop. So the goal of this design and the goal of the, this testing framework mm -hmm. design is try to provide a simplified version of the virtual environment. So we, we employ the single process model into instantiate multiple nodes, multiple multiple operating system in order to ease the debug and test and development. And by combining the network simulators, uh, we can also provide deterministic clock, which give us the all which give us the same testing result from the every different execute, execution. And uh, one of the benefits of using network simulator is that they, uh, it built in ha it has a rich, rich network configuration tools or network configuration feature uh, inside the network simulator, which we can use as is in this testing framework. And once we can create such a test program, which is a single, pro a single process program, it is easy to automate this test in, uh, in a less uh, expensive cost. So I'm running the, this kind of test, uh, test framework in a publicly available continuous integration server, which is Circle CI. And uh, you can test each commit in a public server. If you have a commit and a push to the remote server, this public CI server triggers the test with the new, newly attached parts. So by, I'm not saying we do have, we have to test three or three and uh, 30 or 40 times in a day. But uh, you can easily detect the regression, <coughs> regression bugs from the, some reasonable amount for a reasonable amount of interval of the testing. Let's say I'm doing this kind of testing in every day, in every night. And uh, this continuous uh, testing with a newly available code is, is help us to detect the regression bugs. So I'm going to briefly introduce about the internals of this framework. So the architecture is implemented as a newly introduced architecture of the Linux kernel. In this libOS project, we use the arc slash lib architecture, which contains the three different components inside the, the particular architecture. The first one, first component is called the virtualization core layer which provides the isolation between the different, different instances of the network stack. And in order to provide this isolation, we used the DLM open function call, which instantiates, di uh, which dynamically loads the library in a different, other different instances in a single processes. And the second component is called kernel layer, which provides the implementation of the kernel API. In the libOS design, we implement the software interrupts, timer-related API, 
and some of the memory allocator. And uh, we also need this, some sort of the stub code within this layer because and in order to provide transparency to the other code. So by using this implemented API and the stub code, you can use the unmodified uh, unmodified code like a networking subsystem can be transfer can be completely unmodified within this uh, within this layer. And we also provide a POGIX API to the user space application. We implemented this API from scratch, and the coverage is not so good, but uh, it's the number of uh, functions is increasing about increasing day by day. So how to use it by a network simulator? So all you need is to describe a testing scenario script written in C++, I'm sorry, <laughs> to, uh, to describe what kind of time that you want to execute applications, or what kind of traffic do you want to inject, or how the network topology and the link configuration will be like. But you can also, in, you can also implement the randomness uh, within the testing scenario. That's it. So this part is purely same as identical as a, a network simulation, uh, how to use a network simulator. But in our case, we need to have uh, an application to configure let's say, to configure the kernel network stack. For example, we need to have an IP route to utility to configure IP addresses or route information. In order to use that, all we need is to add a single linker option, which, is, which creates the position independent, independent executable as a user space application. And the kernel path should be also uh, recompiled as a, as a shared library that Libo has provided. After that, uh, you, you, you just run this uh, recompiled binary in your, in your network simulator. So this is the list that we have been tested in our, in our test environment. Uh, application has been tested with the Quagga routing suite and IP route to uh, utilities. And uh, we also try to use the traffic generators like uh, IPATH or pain command. And uh, some of the another protocol like uh, DNS implementation of the bind six unbound is also available in this, uh, is tested in our environment. And for the kernel side of the protocol stack and uh, protocol support, I think we don't have any limitation of the support of the protocols. And we can even test with the out of three protocol like multiple CCP is not, uh, it's not yet upstream in it, but we can test it such a stuff. But there is certain, certainly limitation which is not useful with this framework uh, is a kind of performance study of the computation power, computation capacity, because the deterministic clock that we are using from the network simulator side assumes the, they can use the unlimited amount of resources available. So if you configure the one terabps link in your test, and you will inject some traffic from application, we cannot see any packet loss because the, uh, the computation power and the link, ca uh, link capacity is unlimited. So this kind of situation is not applicable with this test testing framework. But if you in inject some restriction on this capacity, like uh, if, if you configure some limited amount of the, uh, bandwidth in the link, uh, in the link you can study the, how the congestion control algorithm on TCP behave with this restricted environment, for example. And by using this facility, we, we implemented the test suite uh, listed in this, in this figure, uh, these slides. So we, we, we created some of the basic socket uh, testing suite 
which covers the various other summaries. Yeah. So the link speeds you're defining goes through NS3. Yes. Okay. Uh, you're not using any net dev or anything like no. that. No. And NS3 has their own network device model. I see. Which can expose to the application, and they have Ethernet link, Wi-Fi link. So you can define this here, three GPP. Yes. Uh, yep. This latency. Right. Okay. Cool. So this is a list of the test suite that we have been implemented. And by using this <coughs> the test suite, we have been conducted the nightly test with the latest available net, net next branches since almost four years ago. And uh, those are the risks that we have been detected as a regression bug during this test. I think we first, uh, uh, first time that we have been, we have found the bug from this test suite is the transform, uh, transform framework subsystem in during the 3.19 versions. Before that, we also have been tested, but we, I don't know, we cannot find any regression bug at the time. But after 3.19 and until the 4.2, we, we have been found such a bugs, mostly related to the IPv6, maybe because of the, I don't know, there are so many changes in, during the IPv6. And interestingly, after 4.2, until now, 4.5, blah, blah, I didn't find anything. I, I don't know why, but uh, maybe they, we test very well before, before doing commits. So I'm going to move to the concrete use cases. So if you have any questions, I can take some before, yeah. I have a question about the um, amount of code that you're testing that's not actual kernel code. So there's the POSIX layer that you yep. say is re-implemented, and in the glue, I imagine there's some like, memory allocation, maybe? Yeah, memory allocation, yeah. There is glue stuff um, going. But actually, mostly the, the POSIX layer, how much how much libOS specific code is that? How much libOS what? Like, how much code did you have to add to have a... To do such yeah. a It's uh, for the kernel extension, I mean, I mean the, the size of patches to the upstream, it is about it is about five kilo lines of code to do this, and uh, of course you also have a project project implementation which is not part of these patches, but it might be bigger than these patches, I believe, and also there are some extension to the network schmitter side which also has a huge amount of code to provide such a feature. I'm not testing that part. I'm, not, I'm only testing this kind of part, which is not part of the DevOS part, which is a networking subsystem. I will show you the coverage of, uh, simple coverage measurement of the, my testing code, which is not so good, by the way. Any other questions? Okay, so from now, uh, I will show you how to write the test program within this framework. So before going to the detail, I would like to briefly introduce what is network simulator. This is um, because network simulator is mainly for the academic or research purposes, and maybe you might not be familiar with that. So it's basically, uh, a user space program to study some particular network behavior or network protocol or some of the some of the some of the protocols in the network anyway. So it has a really flexible parameter configuration from the from the bottom to the application and from the device to the applications. And it is usually implemented as a single process, but it can be it can be extended as a distributed 
parallel processes for the speed up purposes. And uh, you, you, we usually study to describe or implement a model, which we call the model as a protocol implement, as abstracted protocol implementation. But uh, for us, testing the Linux kernel stack, we don't have to care about this model. We can just use the existing implementation to start to test uh, on top of network simulator. And as I mentioned, the result obtained from this simulation is always the uh, same because we use the deterministic scheduler. But you can also put or uh, inject randomness controlled by the mm, testing scenario, which may not realistic sometimes, but it is useful for the testing purposes because if you want to reproduce your spotted bug, and if your environment is not deterministic, it is really hard to do, uh, uh, it is really hard to reproduce the bug again after that. So, so by, by using this framework, what you need before writing a test program is an installation of this framework. By, we provided the, some of the shortcut to install the, all the stuff, uh, which is shown in this make test pin command. And uh, after that, write a simulation scenario <coughs> written in C++ pro program. Uh, with this scenario should include the, all the stuff like uh, how many nodes you want to test it, or how many links should be connected to each other, or uh, how, uh, what kind of timing that you have to do some, um, some events, like uh, when you want to inject your traffic, or when your test should be finished, or something like that. And after writing this scenario, you can run young, this test in locally with a created program, or you can just put this uh, testing testing program to the other machine, like uh, as I'm <coughs> shown in the uh, public available server. So this is the outlook of the simulation scenario. Like, as I mentioned, you can define the number of nodes in this testing scenario, and uh, this part shows the, which kind of network stack that you want to test it. Uh, in the LibOS pro, uh, building system, we will provide this library, LibSim Linux, with the specific version of this uh, kernel tree. So you can change or you can combine a different version of the Linux uh, stack by setting a different value of this uh, set network stack functions. And after that, maybe you want, if you want to use some application, user space application in your test, you can write such a description, which shows the name of, which describes the name of the application, and which node you want to execute this application, and which kind of, what kind of timing that you want to start it. That's it. So there are a couple of uh, programming interface to describe such a testing scenario. So for example, application can be defined, this, uh, defined by using this help, helper function. And uh, also, we, we created the sys, sys control wrapper in order to configure the kernel parameters uh, inside the uh, library version of the kernel stack. And the log is also available, uh, generated to the some of the local directories. And uh, IP command, only IP command has a helper library that you can specify the particular argument of the IP command. All the stuff is uh, described in the manual, which is available on this page. So after writing a scenario, we need to build, compile this scenario because it is a C++ program. Now for that, we are using the WAF uh, building tool, I believe, to build, to build up this script. And after building this script, you can use 
the dedicated script uh, which is called test dot by 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 specifying specifying the name of the test and a couple of options after that. And uh, if you want to test your uh, program with Bulgrind, which is kind of memory error detector of the user space application, you can specify a particular option with this way. <coughs> and there are also wrapper command inside the make file. Like if you test invoke make test under the top directory, you can test uh, you can do similar things as you as you can see in the uh, top part. So I would like to uh, briefly explain about uh, uh, one of the one of the test script that we have been uh, we have created, which is the encapsulation protocol test with, by using the IP route UTT and the net, um, Linux Linux kernel stack. So this is the topology that we tested in this script, which is really simple. We used two <laughs> different nodes, configured the physical IP addresses on the physical link, and the tunnel interfaces with the virtual IP addresses. And after creating the virtual network devices, we verified this reachability by using the ping command from the from this node to the inner addresses of this uh, configured in this opposite side node. And this unit test uh, Includes the couple of the encapsulation protocols, uh, which is uh, GRE and the IP6, IP in IP, and LTTP and the flow over UDP. And the full script is available on the web, but uh, I'm going to briefly highlight the part of this test script. So for the tunnel configuration, you can describe, you can describe the IP command as shown in this part. Like in the node number zero, you can add the tunnel, uh, tunnel by specifying the user IP command. And the other node can be also configured like this. And uh, for the verify, uh, verification of the reachability, uh, ping six command can be used like this in this particular node on this particular timing. And uh, in order to verify whether the packet is goes through the tunnel and going back through the tunnel, you can also check the packet inside of the packet by looking at the header, uh, the value of the particular value of the value of the packet by checking this, uh, inspecting the Data, data contents. So that's pretty much all about the, how to write a test script. And uh, once you finish writing this test program, you can generate, uh, you can invoke the test by make this command and generate some useful format of the test result, like we use the X unit format to, in order to describe how the test is what's going on. So you can see each, the status of each test, uh, this particular IP6 GRE test was passed with this amount of time of the test. And once you have such a formatted text, you can easily for visualize the test result on like this, because we are using Jenkins, we can easily use the built-in available visualizer in the Jenkins. And one of the interesting use cases to use this framework is it is easy to bisect the bug by using a single program, running on the virtually instanti instantiated multiple hosts. So, all you need is prepare, prepare the shell script to invoke this make test command. So those part is required because we are out of three modules. But if you are if you are upstream, maybe all you need is this make test command. 
in order to bisect the bug. And then running this git bisect command and showing some the particular point that the particular bug was introduced. And we also employed coverage measurement tool uh, in our nitrate test in order to measure how much how much ex how much your test program can exercise your the code under the test. It's a little bit hard to see, but uh, you can see how many of course is covered by your test program. And the debugger implement uh, integration is also easy with the multiple node instances. So in this case, you employ the one, two, three, four, five, six nodes in a single program, but you can run a single GDB by, uh, in order to debug the code. But the single program, in this case, this single program includes the six nodes instances in the single processes. But maybe you want to see which part of which node of the code is running at this particular moment. Like uh, if you put some breakpoint and if you stop some, uh, the program stop at the breakpoint, maybe you want to see which node stops this point. So in order to provide such a node identification, we provide the wrapper functions, which is shown in this part. So you can use this func uh, wrapper function to identify which node is running at this particular format. So you can easily, the, you can easily inject the conditional breakpoint by specifying the number of nodes at, around this part. And uh, also by wind is also easily available by prefix uh, by using the bubbling command with the test program. So that's almost it from for my this uh, for this tutorial. So I walk through the the walk through uh, I provide the walkthrough review of the our testing framework with library libos libos and the DCE. And this framework has a uniqueness from the other project, like we provided a single processes model to instantiate the multiple hosts. And it also has a flexible network configuration thanks to the network simulator facility. And it also has a deterministic scheduler in order to, in order to reproduce the bug easily. <coughs> so for the future direction of this uh, framework, we will work on to merge this um, this code to the newly introduced project, which is LKRL. And I think it's almost done. Part of this code is almost for it, but uh, it doesn't take so much time to finish finalize this coding. And I will also, we will also keep testing with the latest net branches, and I will get you back if I find something interesting. And all the information about how to use it or what kind of interface that you can use it is available on the web. And the code is also available at the GitHub. So thank you so much for your time. And I would be happy to take a question if you have. Yes. No. no. Okay. You I get the question. Yep. So can you run more than one binary on the on one stack of Linux? Or yeah, and the question is, can, can we run the multiple application on the single scenario? And the answer is yes. We can specify, I haven't experiment, uh, I haven't measured how many, how many kinds of application that we can run, but uh, there's <coughs> no limit. You can, if you can describe in a scenario, you can do it basically. If it is a library, yep. um, so don't I have to load it in my unit space program that I'm having in the test? If, if, I, if I want to have, for example, Quagga, I need more mm -hmm. than one process. I need yep. Zebra and OSPFD. Yes. And how does that work? There is a 
um, uh, there, there is our own IPC implementation. Ah, okay. We are using socket in order to communicate each other. Ah, okay. So the, the, the POSIX layer that you have um, is in the user space process yep. and it, it goes through the IPC to right. the library. Ah, okay. Any other questions? Yes. So the applications that you start from your test script, they're just the normal executables that you would normally run on Linux native? Yes. And uh, without any special compiler options. You just use the LD preload wrapper, and uh, when you specify the executable, you just search for those applications in the path uh, like normally. Yeah. That's a very uh, good question because <laughs> it has some restriction, limitation. If the application is in, in, implementing the busy pole, we cannot handle it. So in that case, we have to modify the application code in order to catch in the, our, our bottom layer. But other than, other than that, we, all we need is to provide the position independent executable in order to dynamically load into the processes. That's it. Yes? Just a general question about LibOS. Yes. Um, the threading model. So when packets move between, so if you say I want to test the like, uh, RPS or RFS layer, how does that work? I'm sorry, RPS? The internal threading model within LibOS. Okay. Um, and in a real kernel, packets can move between you know, uh, process context and, and the software queue and, and so on. Yep. Uh, the question is how my understanding is the, how to map the kernel context to the user space facility or something yeah. like that. So or we have been implemented the, all the kernel, kernel context primitive as a single project thread. So all the stuff is mapped into the single process, uh, single project thread. So by default, in the voice implementation, we had uh, nine project thread when you started uh, you build, you build it up a libOS, which is because of the number of the software interrupt and the timers is nine. But uh, the other project, LKL, is using different mod, slightly different model, which may extensively use the project thread more than libOS. I think I may need to investigate how they are doing, but uh, they can be implemented a different way. Yes, Eric. So the code, the code running uh, in user space and uh, camera space, normally we have, like, if we copy data from user to camera, we have some memory protection uh, checks. How is done with the device? Memory protection check. How, how do we implement a memory protection is the question. I think I need to check the code. Normally, the, when you do, for example, a copy in yes. user space to camera, we ah, okay. check if the user gave us a valid user space. Uh, user yep. so copy in, copy out is just a mem copy, mem copy at this moment. But uh, So you disable all the, 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 the check. Right? right. But it depends on the underlying system. Uh, in the example that I showed here is a user space program, which doesn't have to map the, such a memory. But if you want to run on the hypervisor, for example, maybe you, we have to have uh, such a kind of memory protection with the memory translation, address translation. If you don't have any other question, I would like to thank you for your attention and the time, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>